So I want to take a, a closer look at this LED driver board. Um, this is uh, from Shaw Electronics. It is a fixed current LED driver board. This one is 700 milliamps, so it's designed for a string of 3 watt LEDs. But the output voltage can be either lower or higher, or the same, as the input voltage. And that means that um, it's extremely flexible. If, for example, you put 12 volts in, you can have any number of LEDs on the output from 1 to getting on to 20, I think. Now, as well as the 700 milliamp version of this driver, there's also a 350 milliamp uh, version, which is designed for 1 watt LEDs. Um, and I recently used this on my LED project board to drive a string of 3 watt LEDs there, down around the back there. Um, but there was an issue with the enable input and in the end, in order to uh, switch the LEDs on and off, I had to solder these two wires onto pins 1 and 2 of the chip because pin 2 of the chip is the enable input, pin 1 is the ground. But the query was, what is the enable input on the connector, which is the middle um, one on this 3 pin connector here, what does it actually do? Because pulling it low didn't work. Now on the eBay listing for this device, um, and you can see that it's from Sure Display eBay seller, which is um, part of Sure Electronics, uh, £4, $6.57. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, there's some data on how to use the enable pin here, it's the bottom item, and it says it's the PWM terminal. When applied with 5 volts or suspended, full amount of current will be output, and when connected with ground, output current will be zero. Well, this is actually wrong. It doesn't work, and I ought to tell Shure Electronics that this is an error. So what I want to do is try and find out how to drive this enable pin um, to switch the uh, unit on and off. Now, the clue to what's going on here is in the data sheet. And if I scroll down to the typical application circuits, um, all of them have here uh, the enable pin, pin 2, with a pulse that when it's low, the LEDs are off, and when it's high, the LEDs are on. And there are lots of these application circuits throughout the data sheet. Another one here, pin 2, enable, pin 2, enable. And they all have this pin to enable with this positive going pulse to uh, when it's high, the uh, LEDs will be on and when it's low, they'll be off. Except for one, and this is where the solution is. If you look at this one, it says with dimming function and you can see that they're not using pin two. What they've actually got as a control input is a diode shown here as a 1N4148 going to pin 5, the feedback input. Now there's another little clue to what's going on here on page 2. It says pin number 5, pin name feedback, feedback pin. The feedback threshold voltage is 0.22 volts. And what I'm thinking is if possibly we raise that pin to above 0.22 volts, we could interrupt the feedback system and shut down the operation of this chip. And if we do that rapidly, we should be able to do brightness control. And by doing some continuity checks, I've worked out that this enable pin, the middle pin, as I say, on this block of three, goes through these two components down here, which are a 1K resistor and a small diode. It's not a 4148, but it's probably something very similar. And that goes to pin five, the bottom pin here. So the way the enable input on this board has actually been configured is the same as this last of the application circuits where we've got a diode going to pin 5. So I'm going to strip back down the project board so that all I've got on it is the Arduino for pulse width modulation and the LED driver board and we'll see whether we can uh, vary the brightness of the LEDs using that pin 5 um, PWM. So now I've stripped this down to the bare essentials. I've got the SEPIC LED driver board, the pin 2 enable input, which is the uh, yellow wire there I've just disconnected. We've got a string of LEDs, uh, 10 LEDs in this case, connected to the LED output connector, which is there. 
and there's 12 volts coming in on the uh, red and black terminals here to feed the input to the driver board. And if I connect the 12 volts to my battery booster pack, the string of LEDs will come on. So the SEPIC um, driver board is now acting as a boost converter and it's producing about 33 volts, something like that, on the output in order to get those LEDs to come on. But what I'm interested in now is can we control this thing using the enable input, which is the center one on that block of three, on the board. Now, the um, information from the vendor says ground it. So here's the wire. Let's connect it to ground. And as you can see, absolutely nothing happens. So grounding the enable pin is not the solution. What I'm going to try is that threshold 0.22 volts. I figure that if I put um, a single AA cell on there and we raise the feedback pin above that 0.22 volts, that might do the trick. Let's have a go. So the LEDs are on and now I've connected this 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride battery with the positive wire going in to that enable input pin and I'm just going to touch this negative wire onto ground and there it is the LEDs are switched off when I connect that to ground so it seems that by putting just 1.2 volts onto that feedback pin that's enough to disrupt the feedback uh, loop of this uh, switch mode converter so that it actually switches off and the data sheet says that we can use this for dimming so we should be able to do that at um, 500 or 1000 hertz and use it for brightness control so what i'm going to do is connect up the arduino which is currently just flashing um, with this potentiometer here and vary the pulse uh, width and see if we can get brightness control using that 1.2 volt battery so what I've actually done, uh, just as a temporary measure, is I've put the negative of the 1.2 volt Eneloop battery into the opto isolator collector, put the emitter to ground, which is that black wire which I soldered to pin 1, and um, I've still got something in the Arduino which is flashing that LED on and off, and that has resulted in being able to control um, the uh, driver at that rate, but what I'm particularly interested in is dimming. So let's get the pulse width modulation running on the Arduino and see if we can vary the brightness of these LEDs. And so here's the end result, and it's a bit strange. I turn the potentiometer, and you can see if you look at the black plastic of the uh, power booster pack there, that I am, let's get both in shot, I am able to control the brightness of the LEDs using this pot so as I turn it anti-clockwise, they go dim. As I turn it clockwise, they go bright. But there's a funny jump where it suddenly jumps to almost full brightness or full brightness, it appears. And that's way before I've actually turned the pot to the, its full extent. So you can see, if you look at the yellow LED there on the uh, opto board, as I back off from 100%, of course, the LED is inverse logic, unfortunately, um, We've got quite a lot of off there without anything happening to the brightness of the LED string. And only when I drop it back beyond a certain point does it suddenly drop in brightness. And there's a very sudden drop off. And then it's fairly linear the rest of the way. Now, I'm just wondering whether it's something to do with my 1.2 volt battery. But I think the only way I'm going to properly debug this is to uh, get the oscilloscope on it.